So I'm curious as a next question for you guys is what is the difference between um, a couple or a person who succeeds at recovery versus one who doesn't or one who relapses? And we kind of talked a little bit about that, but if you want to summarize maybe some of those things. Let me take the guy part. And take the yeah. Next part. <laughs> so <laughs> with, with men, uh, we don't mentor as many people right now because we're in the thick of kids and coaching and stuff like that. So we have to kind of monitor that. But there are guys that I've not met with. I've met with a couple of times. And I'm like, hey, you're not ready. Uh, there's guys who have chosen to end their marriages. Um, there's women that have chosen to end their marriages. All valid reasons and everything. But the difference between a man who wants help and is actually wanting to is that first part where you've mentioned several times is conviction. Mm. You have to be convicted. If you're not truly convicted of it, and I will tell guys who come to me, I'm like, hey, I'm struggling with this, right? Okay. Are you wanting to get off porn for your wife or for your marriage? Because if you're doing that, that's the wrong reason. You need to do it for your conviction of you. Mm. You convicted of it. Because you can do something for somebody else, but we all know that's short-lived. Yeah. You have to have a true conviction in your heart that's going to actually make you, force you to address your pride and address all these secretive actions to to push yourself in some sort of honesty with yourself. And that's the hardest part for a man is like, go look in the mirror. I, this is a little exercise that I would have men do too. Is like, go look in the mirror and go tell yourself, I am an addict of pornography. Mm-hmm. And it's not some weird identification. It's just, you need to know that truth that you need help with that, right? Yeah. And so let's quit skirting around this issue, right? And the, the second part of this whole thing is like, hey, you've got, just like we were talking, you got to do the actions. Like there was times where I would hand her the cell phone. Even today, to this day, you know, there's times when I'll say, there's things that we have in place and I'll say, hey, Tap, it's been a really rough day. That's her cue to say, okay, Drill's struggling right now and we need to make sure this is cool. But that's me interacting with her and telling her like, hey, I've had a really rough day. Yeah. So. Porn is not an option for me. So that means I'm going to dip into something else. Uh, isolation, depression. I might go eat a, you know, two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at 11 o'clock. You know, there's something <laughs> I'm going to do, right? And so, but that's her key. And so sometimes she'll say, hey, what do you need? Do you want to sit and talk? Do you want to do this? And I'll say, hey, you know, let me just go chill for a second on the back porch. Just kind right. of get my head there, right? And so those are things where men have to get there's so many people that look to us and be like man we love your marriage and it's like man do you really want to see the work that's went into that wow yeah that's because cool. there's a lot of bricks been laid there so yep. and and so whenever you when the first thing i look at a guy the first thing is that's what i'm trying to gather is like hey are you really doing this for yourself out of conviction and are you really ready to do the work because about the first week of talking with a guy, I can figure out like, no, you're not really in this to win this right now. Mm. You're just doing this for everybody else. Yes. So. so it's a God thing, like really waiting on it God. It really is. Yeah. hundred percent. It really is. And with the women, um, when, because a lot of the times how we walk with people is the spouse come to me first. And so I'm like, I am absolutely here to help you and guide you and walk with you. But I need to be very honest with you so that you fully understand this. Um, this is not something to hang over your husband's head. Um, and God is not a genie. Mm. So we need to quit using him as such. There is real work that has to go into this. And when you promise and vow to be a supportive wife, you need to be just that. That does not mean you need to be a doormat and allow whatever is going on, but it does mean that you need to pray with your husband, that um, you need to speak truth to him, because I feel like that's part of grace, too, is like, even though this hurts, like, and you're confessing to me, and I know you feel guilt and shame and all that stuff, but I'm hurt, too. And it's okay for me to express to you that I'm hurt. Because a lot of women feel like, oh, I can't say any, I can't say anything because it's going to disrupt his recovery. And I'm like, no, this is like a journey together you need to be honest you don't need to be hateful or mean spirited about it but you do need to be honest and so sometimes their spouses they're looking they're like doing like ultimatums well if he gets help then we'll fix it or um if not then I'm walking out and there's been spouses where I'm like they're ready to go 
Like mm-hmm. it's more than just pornography going on here. There's there's zero connection or communication. Yeah. And so that um really the yeah. both the couple just has to be ready to do the work because it takes a lot of work. And that's and I said it just a few minutes ago, I'll say it again. God is not a genie. And you absolutely need to pray, but he expects you to do the work. Um, he can absolutely heal somebody. I, I do not discount that at all. But in a lot of churches, and this is where we got sideways with one of our churches, is they would do these amazing sermons and speak on it, and but then tell people that it's because they don't have a good relationship with Jesus. Or And I'm, I remember being like, oh, that's that's not true though people can have a great relationship with jesus and and still struggle and and then people start thinking oh my gosh maybe god doesn't like me maybe maybe something's wrong with me because they're praying and it's not going away and i'm like that's so sad i love that they do sermons on that but let's have some resources yes for to help for people because some we've even had couples where like you need more help than we can even provide you need real therapy there's a real issue here and we're we're like we'll walk beside you, but also you need therapy. Mm-hmm. So it's just there just has to be a lot of work done, and most of that work is communication and being open and honest. Yep, I love that. I love that you. I I heard you guys say that on the Eight Thousand Promises podcast too. It's like um, going to these church sermons, and maybe it is a great message, and it's like oh we'll pray about it, but then okay, what's next though? What's next? What are right. the steps? Because without a plan, people fail. Like you need a plan, a strategy to overcome these big feats in our lives. Hundred yeah. percent. 